Hey guys, I hope you're all really well this week. This is the second of the two ATX power supplies that I got delivered. You might remember me this uh, unpackaging these and showing you them last week. Well, I got the other one, the 1000 watt one working, and this is the second one. So it's a Corsair TX650M. And you also may remember from last week's video that this is the one that got the bit of physical damage when it was sent in the post. So if you look at it on the side, um, it looks like it's damaged. You can see where it's damaged there. There's a bit of damage on the side of it. I think this is just peripheral damage. Um, I don't think it's done any harm to the, you know, to the circuit inside. Um, so I'm I'm expecting to find when I open this that the motherboard is okay. But this is our project for this week, and I'm going to bring you through the troubleshooting process. So stay along for the spin, and we'll see if we can get this one working as well. We're going to have a quick look around this here, see if there's any signs of damage since I didn't do that the last time and I missed a pretty obvious burn component. But if you look in here, don't see anything. This is the input section up to the bridge rectifier. These are the main two filter capacitors again. Uh, everything looks okay. Oh, there's a secondary filter capacitors. They all look okay as well. And that's one of the big MOSFETs. I think it looks okay. Okay, well, there's nothing immediately obvious there. If you spotted anything that I missed, certainly put it down in the comments below. But I think we're going to have to take it out and start to do a few more tests. Let's do that. At this point, I need to include a quick safety message. This video is for demonstration purposes only. It's extremely dangerous to work on high voltage circuits and this can end up in debt or serious injury. Please do not attempt to copy what I'm doing in this video. Thank you. So what is the fault with my power supply? Well, I plugged this in and I got no standby voltage at all. Uh, I jumpered it on just for the sake of trying something and there was no secondary voltages at all. So it seems like there's something catastrophically wrong with this. Uh, I've taken out the board, I've taken a picture here so that we can work on it and I'm going to troubleshoot it in the same manner as I did the previous one. Starting at where the live and neutral wires come onto this board. Before starting work on this board, I found where the main filter capacitors were on this, which is these two here, and I discharged them to make sure that there was no voltage left on the board that could possibly cause any harm. Okay, so our brown wire comes through this hole here. I have disconnected it for the purpose of scanning, but this is where the brown wire comes through here. So that's our live wire, and this here is where our blue wire comes through. So that's our neutral. And we're gonna follow this up to the bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier, once again, is easy to identify. It should be somewhere close by where the two, these two wires hit the board. And as in the previous video, we can identify it by four straight pins in a line. So what should be happening here is there should be a continuous path from our live wire coming to one of the pins of the bridge rectifier. And there should be a continuous path from where the second wire, the neutral wire, hits the board and to the other center pin of the bridge rectifier. So that's what I'm gonna check for now. I've just marked in the pins on the bridge rectifier, so we've got the AC pins or two middle pins of the bridge rectifier. We've got two bridge rectifiers back to back in this configuration, again similar to the last power supply that we looked at. So what I'm going to do is introduce my multimeter in continuity mode. Once again I've drained all the voltage from the board so it's safe to work on. So in continuity mode I place my red probe to the where the neutral hits the board right here and my second probe to the AC pin and when I place it here I find out that there is continuity from here to one of the center pins of the bridge rectifier so that looks good next we need to check the pad from the live which comes in here to the other pin of the other center pin of the bridge rectifier so when again in continuity mode I place my probes in these positions I don't get any beep at all so there is no continuous pad from here to the center pin of the bridge rectifier. So given that I know we have a fuse across here and there's a fuse in this position on most of these switch mode power supplies, I decide to jump the fuse and see if we've continuity after the fuse. When I place my probe here, I find that there is continuity after the fuse. So obviously what's happened here is the fuse has blown. Now you can get random situations where the fuse just blows because it's worn out or because of a power surge or something like that but we need to be conscious from this point on that we can't just replace the fuse and plug it back in because it's likely that there's a short on the board. So there's a little trick I can use to check if it is shorted or not and I'm going to show you that now. 
So just to reiterate the position we're in at the moment, this power supply did not power on. When I checked the fuse, I found that the fuse was blown. I suspect that there may be a short somewhere on this board, so I don't want to just replace the fuse and plug it back in and have it blow again. So what I'm doing here is, I get a 100 watt 240 volt bulb, and I wire it across in place of the fuse. So what happens here is, instead of me powering it on and the fuse just blowing again, or worse again, if I just solder the wire across it and it'll blow up some other component, I solder in this bulb which limits the current going to the circuit. So what I'm expecting here is, if I power it on now and that light comes on and stays on, then I know I have a short on the circuit that I'm working on at the moment. What should happen if I don't have a short is I plug it in, there's a short intake of current which will cause the bulb to flash but it will switch off then. If the bulb stays on it's most likely that there is still a short on this board. So let's see what happens. So with my 100 watt light bulb soldered in place of my fuse I powered the power supply back on again and when I powered it on the light bulb switched on and stayed on. So we do still have a short on this board. Now a lot of you clever people out there are going to be saying, well if the board is shorted and we've got a certain amount of current coming through the bulb and then going through that shorted component to ground, why don't we just identify, you know, through thermal means, which component is shorted. However, you've got to remember here, we're working with mains voltage, so you cannot touch around this board. With the laptops we're dealing with very very small voltages, maybe 20 volts or less. With these boards you're dealing with up to like 320 volts DC, you cannot just touch around the board or you may not touch anything ever again. This is the one scenario that I would really like to have a thermal camera for. Number one because there's so many components on the board it would help to quickly identify where the heat is on the board but second of all for safety reasons because I've seen some people online who quickly power it off discharge the main capacitors on the board and then go touching around for the hot component but I've never been comfortable doing that with something where there is such high voltages present. So I'm looking at the moment at a Unity thermal camera which I might buy for this purpose. But what I'm going to do on this board until I get better equipment or better skills is I'm just going to go around and check for the most common components that may have failed on this board and see if I can just locate them. So I'm going to plug this out discharge the capacitors, leave it for a while until all the voltage is gone from the board and then just carry out a few tests around the board and see if I can find which components are shorted. I went around testing some of the main components that fail on these and what I found was this diode here had failed and this diode here had failed and um, this is an inductor I think that's something to do with the power factor correction that's actually measuring okay but I, I took it off here so you could see the bridge rectifier was fine. That's one of the components that can fail. That's this here. Um, these current sense resistors also tested fine. These larger MOSFETs can also fail because they're under quite a bit of stress with this, but these ones actually are fine on this. But there's one very curious thing on this, and you've probably spotted it already. Now, I did see this when I first opened it, but I have no idea what's going on because neither of those MOSFETs or any of the components surrounding it are actually shorted. But if you look at that there, that's burnt. And I don't know what's going on because it's not a component, it just looks like a contact. And um, you'll see what happens. When I removed all of the shorted components and plugged it back in, this is what happened. This is the front view of the board, so when I plug it in, this is what happens. See that spark? Now let's watch it in slow motion. I've slowed it down to one tenth of the speed, and this is what it looks like. So you can see it playing through now, and the spark when I turn it on happens now. Look at that. So what is causing that? 
So help me out here guys, what's going on with this? I think I know what is happening here, but I'd appreciate a few of your comments down below because I know you guys are working on this sort of thing as well. Just quickly write down below, what is this, what's its purpose, and what's gone wrong? Okay, so that's where we are with this power supply at the moment. I've identified two shorted components. I'm going to send off for replacements for those. I'm going to try and identify what's going on with that spark that's happening when I plug it in as well. But the main purpose of this week's video was just to introduce the concept of the dim light bulb. As you can see, this is a really, really useful method of limiting the current to an AC circuit when you think there may still be a short. We've seen with the lower voltage DC circuits that if I want to limit the current, I just use my bench DC power supply. I set the current limit on it and that's how I control the current. Well, this is a means of doing it for an AC circuit. And what you can do also is if you want to have more or less current going into the circuit, you can just get a bulb with a different wattage on it. I actually have a much more convenient way of implementing a series light bulb as well, which I'm going to show in an upcoming video. So please stay tuned for that. So that's my video for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a laptop on the way this week because I know you guys are all more interested in motherboard repairs on laptops, but unfortunately the seller let me down at the last minute. So I can only fix what I have here. And what I have here at the moment is a couple of broken ATX power supplies. However, if you want to email me with pictures of a motherboard, if you have a faulty motherboard, we can do another in the Help a Subscriber series. Or if you want to ship me something, I'm here in Ireland, so it's probably difficult for most of you. But if you want to contact me through the repair share at gmail.com, and I can communicate with you on either of those subjects. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with something else next week.